Hey everyone, it's Michael here. I uh, hope everyone is doing good. Uh, we'll just give it one more minute and let some people show up um, that may be just trying to get in right now. But we're going to uh, kind of focus. We're going to introduce Carrie here in a second. Carrie Patrick, I know a lot of you know who Carrie is, and, and a lot of you may not know he, who he is and, and what he offers. But we wanted to get him, uh, we finally were able to nail him down and have him. Uh, just kind of do a little presentation and, and do some questions on some of the, the, the necklaces and stuff that he's doing and he's fulfilling and um, he's got um, he's and I have a I've actually created a little Dropbox folder for some of the uh, uh, mock-ups that he's given me over the last couple of days and um, just some more information that I'll share with you and I'll have that in the members area also in a little bit too but I'll put the link in here uh, as we get going um, and then we're just going to kind of sh uh, show uh, one of the uh, one of the necklaces just in a funnel and just kind of show the, the opportunities for those who may are joining us and may not be uh, Trex users uh, just kind of show you our newest uh, kind of add-on to our Trex uh, e-com system is, is one click upsell funnel and we think uh, some of the, the jewelry can just be an absolute um, killer for that so um, let's give it one more minute here and then we'll get going and I also got Matthew uh, on the line and he's going to kind of show us that and then we'll just at the end we'll just take some questions for all for anybody that has any questions on any of this stuff so uh, with that being said uh, Carrie can you hear me yes I can Michael okay take it away okay uh, can is my screen being shared yes it's sharing right now okay great well uh, as Michael said I am a uh, Carrie better known by some of the group as KP uh, we have uh, been doing some of the custom jewelry uh, fulfillment, uh, I guess, uh, last year and a half or so. I just wanted to bring some of the people up to speed. I know uh, Randy and Greg and uh, Matt and Michael, the Trek team, they've got uh, quite a few new members that have come on board uh, since the new year. And we've gotten some questions and things from you guys just on integrating. And Randy and I have talked about making the integration a, a bit more seamless with some things that uh, we may do in the future. But for now, just wanted to make sure everyone uh, kind of was on the uh, same page with some of the basic uh, basic setup of getting us jewelry, um, you know, setting up SKUs, uh, maybe even some insight on how to put together your designs. Cause it's a little bit different when you're looking at the at the jewelry and uh, a couple concepts to maybe help you with sales a little bit with how you have to look at idea concepts a little different on jewelry than on maybe a shirt or uh, uh, a shirt or a hoodie and uh, then we'll take some questions uh, at the end and like that after Matthew or Michael show off kind of the funnel and how you can use the jewelry as an upsell with some of the Irish design packs they have going on right now with uh, with uh, St. Patrick's Day coming up. So uh, first off uh, for you guys, um, just the uh, probably the only thing that's maybe a bit more important with us than, than it necessarily is with, uh, with PrintX uh with uh with the SKUs, with supplier SKUs. Make sure you guys understand how to set those up. Uh we have and all this information as well for you guys to know is on our site, uh my ecom fulfillment and I'll make sure everyone has has this link that'll have more details. Uh but uh first thing just as far as technical setup. Obviously you've already set us up as a supplier, you've already figured that out Matthew and they have videos in there with how to do that. The reason SKUs are somewhat important to us is it helps us to note, uh, determine, uh, is it a personalized or non-personalized design, the shape of the pendant, and the three shapes we have are the circle, uh, the rectangle, and the square, and then it denotes the color of the background design. Those are the three most important things, and the final four uh, characters can just be something that you make up kind of for your end, but it, we do also use it. Uh, internally, but these first three are the most important. Uh, as far as the skew construction, the, the biggest question is uh, the background colors. The, you use a P or N for personalized, non-personalized, obviously R for rectangle, S for circle, uh, excuse me, S for square, and C for circle. And then most background colors, people are just going to do black. That is the most popular uh, background color. Uh, so we just need a transparent PNG from you. You don't need to include that black background, we will drop it onto a solid black background. Uh, you also can do white. Obviously, we don't need either of those colors. Those are very simple. Uh, if it's B for black, W for white. 
Now, if you are deciding that you are going to use either uh, a custom uh, color uh, instead of V or W for the background, we just ask that maybe you use the hex color instead. Okay, so example here, P still for uh, personalized, S for square, and then this would be the hex code that our team will then go ahead and make sure that that is the proper background for uh, the proper background color for your particular <clears throat> uh, item, okay, for your, your necklace there. Now, for those of you that may be doing images for background, some of you sent in questions about that. That's fine for you to do that. Obviously, you need to send us um, send us those designs already with that background. If it's, you know, obviously if it's auto personalized or manually personalized, there'll be some variation on your end with your setup. Uh, but wanted to show you guys an example of a good bleed space and black, bad bleed space just as you're kind of setting your designs up because some of you aren't uh, necessarily sending your designs in to fit the exact shape of the pendant, the dimensions, and I'll give you references to where you can get access to that. But if you don't, then we kind of have to scale your image, uh, scale your image to kind of fit the, uh, the shape of the pendant. And obviously, if you've got a full color picture background that you're doing, we're fine with doing that, but you don't want to leave any gaps or any space. Uh, so leave some bleed for us to kind of play with. Obviously, we'll, we'll reach out to you. The technical, uh, tech, our team will reach out to you if there are any issues. But that's just a little, uh, little tip for you guys there uh, that some of you guys have been asking about. And then let, let's get a little bit into design elements because things do work a little bit different when you're talking uh, the, the uh, dependence. And, and jewelry versus the shirts. Uh, first of all, we, we pretty much go off of your uh, off your mock-up. Uh, so always center your design in your mock-ups. You know, unless you send us a specific mock-up image that looks different. Um, you know, we're gonna pretty much put out there what you have given us on your mock-up. And believe it or not, some people have a lot of people that sell designs, which I I don't understand how they sell them, but obviously people are really uh, connected, I guess, or uh, really interested in the, I guess, the saying, and they'll buy it even when it looks like this. Uh, but obviously, you're going to get better conversions if you go ahead and kind of have that centered on the uh, uh, centered on the the piece that you're working with. So keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, for circles, we will will say that uh, circles typically uh, work best if. Well, let's, let's go back here. Let's start with this R rectangles work very well for a lot of people if you want to use your existing t-shirt art because most of the time you already have a portrait type shape. I think the print X is, uh, I think it's 2800 by 3200. So you already kind of have your artwork in this more portrait style. So it makes it a lot easier to take that same design and transfer it over to a rectangle. Now, if you're going to work with circles, typically you want to make the shape flow a little bit better just from the design element. It, uh, in some of our personal stuff, we have a different design done for a shirt than we would, say, uh, a circle necklace or for the rectangle than we would uh, the, the, circle, the rectangle necklace versus the circle necklace, just because it lays out and flows a little bit better. Um, you know, ideally, and you can see two examples here. Of, here's one that works a little bit better. It just the surrounding, you know, it doesn't fill up the circle, but it just looks a little a little better than when you've just got a square that you're kind of shoving in there on the circle. Now, this is better than that, but really, when you find out the best thing is when you give your design elements some curve, and we, I just had them throw this together real quick just to give you the concept. I'm not saying any of these designs are, are great, but uh, if you can, you know, work with the curves of the circle, you know, a little bit. It makes it flow a little bit better if you guys are going to focus in on some of the circles. And then you can obviously still do uh, the personalization. Uh, we find that it works best kind of in the center for if you're going to do the automated personalization with Trex um, when you're working with the circle design. Obviously, you don't have to concern with uh, these these type of things as much when you're dealing with the square and rectangle. Uh, but the circles uh, do convert very well. Uh, we're finding that more and more people are uh, the rectangles converting as people start going uh, using those more just because the canvas the surface area is a little larger for you to play with especially people doing personalization I'll show you guys a image here in a bit uh, that show you an image here in a bit where you can get quite a few names on a uh, on a rectangle and it still look pretty decent um, all right 
Next here, uh, like I said, for just some more design elements and, and tips for squares, you know, even width from the top to bottom is ideal. And again, as I said already, rectangles are often the most simple to transfer the existing designs that you have as they fit the canvas area better uh, for more, most portrait uh, type designs. Now, as far as design colors, because you guys almost also have to keep this in mind, and I have a slide that will be coming up that kind of shows you, remember, these are one-inch uh, diameter circles, uh, one-inch by one-inch square, and the rectangle is one-inch by 1.4 inch, the dimensions. So the better contrast you can have, uh, you know, the better the design will pop off. You don't have, a, you know, a big, uh, a big canvas like you do when you're working with a, a shirt or a mug or a tote or whatever else you may go on with. Remember, this is a much smaller uh, overall surface area. Uh, so here's just some tips for uh, basically the bottom line is making sure that you contrast your colors as much as possible uh, so it's just a little easier for the customers to uh, see the design or, or whatever it is that you have going on. And again, and for you guys, some of you guys have already done this, but if you're unsure about how well the designs may contrast, you can always send us an email and we'll try to take a look at it real quickly. The other thing I recommend you do is think about um, uh, think about actually just printing one off. You can put the proper dimensions, maybe printing one off on your own home printer. Obviously, it's not going to look exactly the same, but you can get some type of idea uh, or concept of how that will look at the, you know, size that it's going to be. One of the biggest things is, is because we are talking about a pendant, a smaller size, a contrast and certain font choices that you choose uh, can come into play and be a little bit more important uh, in with these elements than it would, then you'd have to concern with it on, let's say, uh, the uh, a shirt, shall we say. So it's a little bit of information just about design elements that hopefully will help some of you guys. Now I want to roll into, uh, actually let's pull this up here next. Okay, here, here's a quarter, just for you guys to get a concept that actually haven't seen some of these in person. I know some of you have seen them at the live events or you've ordered some yourself. Uh, but that is a quarter, and that is the rectangle there. Uh, like I said, it's one inch this way, 1.4 inches that way. And a quarter is just a little bit smaller than a, uh, than a, a one inch diameter, as far as the circle of, of a quarter. Uh, just for you to kind of get an idea of contrast, seeing it next to, uh, next to something. Now, let's move on from some of the design elements and concepts and talk about uh, idea concepts and the differences between necklaces and shirts. Um, this is something that's seen some of you guys reach out to me, and I think it's important for people to understand. Oftentimes, obviously, when you're selling, it's always about tapping into the, you know, the customers, you know, something that emotionally gets them connected to what you have going on. Now, what works well on shirts but doesn't work on necklaces is typically funny humor. doesn't necessarily work as well because funny humor, you want to show the world, ha ha, laugh at this. I want to be walking and someone look at this shirt and say, oh, man, that's funny or blah, blah, blah. Uh, when you've got a little pendant around your neck, funny humor doesn't necessarily. So while this shirt sold well for a lot of people and worked well, it wouldn't transfer necessarily as well to a necklace. Also kind of the us versus them pride or the anger. Um, you know, when this is for you guys, you, you know, if you're in America, trucks are a big thing. There's a few big brands, Ford, Chevy, uh, Dodge, and they all oftentimes hate the other one. So this is a pretty big meme where this, you know, kid is peeing on the name of the, you know, they don't like Ford, this guy likes Chevy. Um, those type of concepts work great for shirts, the funny humor and the us versus them pride. Uh, think of some of the political stuff that, you know, went on with the last uh, political election. The, the kind of divisive, you know, I'm, you know, I'm with them, I'm not, and I'm not, a, not for them. Works great for shirts. Don't necessarily work as well for necklaces. The reason being, again, keep in mind, this is, I want the whole world to kind of see this, and the necklaces are more for them personally, and they, the world may see it, but they have to decide to walk up and say, hey, look at this, you know, awesome uh, necklace pendant that I have. Okay, so keep that in mind with your necklace. I don't want to see people, you know, obviously we want you to succeed. And if you're launching, you know, this and leading with this as a necklace, uh, you, you know, it, that may be a reason your results aren't, aren't coming through. Okay. Now, some, some designs that are for shirts, let's say, um, pro, you know, positive, I like to say positive pride, uh, love, uh, joy, um, you know, those types of things showing off for your, 
uh, your your grand your grandchildren or you know where you're from or whatever it may be like the, uh, the Texas strong here where people want, want to represent kind of where they're from it those type of designs can work well on a shirt I'm starting to get some feedback can you guys hear that Michael I can't hear it can you still hear me okay then okay yeah I can hear you carry yeah yeah okay uh, Texas strong this can work well on a shirt as well as a pendant, okay, as well as a necklace. So I'm not saying that it's one or the other. I'm just trying to let you know that certain things don't work as well on necklaces uh, when you're looking to sell them. Um, so don't necessarily have to uh, just add that necklace on that particular campaign if the idea concept doesn't necessarily transfer well. All right, let's keep going. Now, the other thing about the size of the pendant is you have to keep that in mind where you're put you don't want your design to be too busy um, depending on the shape that you're using and, and they can't make out the design at all because remember we're still limited to this one inch by 1.4 or this one inch square or this one inch diameter uh, canvas that we're working with so just keep that in mind again because that's some of the issues your customers will have it's not necessarily that the print isn't well it's just you try to fit a thousand word poem onto you know a one inch circle it's going to be tough for them to read without a without a microscope. Now, with that being said, think when you think of jewelry and necklaces, uh, you want to think of uh, think with women when they buy pendants or, or they buy lockets, where maybe there's a little inscription in there uh, that's a personal message about a grandmother or a child or whoever it may be. Sometimes those are tiny, so it doesn't have to be huge for them to be able to read it. Um, and so it's kind of a balancing act as you, as you test, but. But it does have to be something, like I said, the world doesn't have to be able to read it, but they want to be able to look at it and know what that, what that thing means. Now, here's an example of a design that we did. I kind of blurred out the, the design for uh, the, the seller's uh, sake. But um, this is 29 grandkid nicknames. Now, I don't know how well this is going to show up on you know, a webinar with the screen share on Skype, but I was uh, thoroughly impressed with how well these names show up. Uh, and this woman uh, got feedback from because just was raving about it and just loves this, um, just loves this design. So you can get quite a bit on here. Obviously, if you got 29 pieces of customization, you're gonna, you know, it's gonna work out a lot better on a rectangle than it would, you know, a circle or um, uh, circle or square. But just to give you, you guys in mind, can you can you see that that uh, Matthew and Michael? Yeah, I can see it well. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. see it as well. That's good. Yeah, so just so you guys see, we can get that detail. It can be there. Um, just you know, just keep in mind that may determine your, your pendant shape. Or if you get a customer that, uh, like some of our personal, we'll have a customer, because uh, we do a lot of stuff uh, from originally connecting with Ken and Dwight and learning some of uh, them being uh, connected to grandmas a lot. We do quite of our personal stuff a lot is in grandmas. And, uh, you know, so if we get one that orders a circle pendant, and she's got, you know, 18 grandkids' names on it. We may, we proactively will decide maybe to reach back out and say, hey, you may want to consider this on a this shape because it may just look a little bit better. Because obviously, the more grandkid names you have, the smaller we're going to have to make them. Um, but I will tell you this as well: a lot of people are, you know, recommended they're doing their, uh, they're doing their pendants at 24.95 plus, uh, you know, 3.95 shipping or whatever it may be. Sometimes when you get into this level of personalization and this personal touch, you know, it, it can command uh, a couple more dollars uh, out of it, you know, when you're given that personal touch as far as you testing your price points and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I think, uh, all right. So I just contact information for you guys, uh, Skype, our help desk. Uh, you know, email address, uh, email for submitting orders, email for payment, PayPal, those sorts of things. Just listing the contact information there for you guys. But outside of that, um, Matthew, uh, Michael, that is kind of what I wanted to go over, talk about a couple tips, ideas, some technical stuff. And uh, that's, that's it for the most part. Unless you guys have, we can open up questions or if you want to show the, uh, the funnel off first and then go to questions, up to you guys. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you, Kerry. Um, we'll take some questions at the end, guys. Uh, what we're going to do now is, um, Matthew, if you want to go ahead and just show, just kind of run through the funnel. I think I added uh, a piece of the jewelry. 
um, in there just to kind of give it a, a good visual. Let me make you a presenter. And then what I'll do, guys, is after that, I'll kind of show you uh, some of the things that I included, and, I'll, and I'm going to put the link to the Dropbox where you have uh, information, mock-ups, and I'll kind of show you a mock-up that I know we were using in, in last uh, last year to on the circle pendants to make sure that you, you get it all in that area. And uh, I'll kind of just uh, take you through that. I think I even included that PSD in the uh, Dropbox. So let me make you a presenter, Matthew. Yeah, sure, yeah. Hey, uh, how many people on here are Kerry's crowd that haven't seen uh, T-Rex? Is there many guys on there? Oh, Matthew? Yeah. Can you hear me? Actually, no, none as of yet. Uh, I was actually going to talk around about just setting up a separate a separate webinar altogether because I didn't have time to really get to get that together the way I wanted. So we'll do that separate. So this should just all be your crew on this. Got yeah, yeah, got yeah. So can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought we'd have some of Kerry's guys, so I was going to just run over the funnel a bit. But um, hopefully everybody understands the funnel by now because I've gone over it a few times. So uh, Michael's set up a, a test one just to show the uh, show the jewelry. And jewelry would be a great upsell for clothing. So I'm just going to get past this first one. Oh, Matthew! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So I'm sure everybody's seen this already several times. Just try and get through it as quick as I can. So here we go. So there we go. There is a personalized piece of jewelry there that follows on from the other design. Puts the name on it as well, just like a shirt, and looks uh, pretty cool there. So we will add this to our order. Do we have any more jewelry on here, Michael? I don't think I put any more jewelry. I think I kind of went right to it. Should be a yeah. pillow. Got you. Got you. Got you. So. What I'll, yeah, it's a pillow, yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just skip back to that campaign and preview it so everyone can get a good look at it. So there you go, guys. Yeah, you can have a good look at that. Yeah. I, I like the mock-ups that he gave us. I just I, I chose that one. Um, just randomly, uh, but as you guys will see, there there's a few, there's a couple different mockups um, for for this, um, and there's some uh, you'll see them on his site too. Actually, let me go ahead and get that link while I'm thinking about it. I'll put it. In, yeah, I'll put it in. yeah, yeah. The, that looks like a nice mockup because the ones that I've got or seen are quite old now. Okay. All right, guys, so if you go, go here, I'm going to put this in the chat. You will get access to the mock-ups. You'll get access to the PSDs. And what I can do now is I can take the screen back and kind of show you exactly what's in there. Um, so Yeah, and having a good mock-up makes all the difference. People buy by looking at the images 90% of the time. So if you get great mock-ups and great images, then you won half the battle. Can, can you see this? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, got it, Michael, yeah. You got the Photoshop? Uh, yeah, Photoshop, yeah. Okay, so, um, guys, I included this in there. Uh, this is a mock-up that we had um, for the round uh, pendant. And also in here you'll see that... Um, we actually, there's actually quite a few designs in here that we did. I just left in here. You guys are more than welcome to use those if you don't have them, or uh, if you do, you can use these to give you some really good ideas um, on, on how to use it. So there's some really cool designs in here. 
um, that I will actually get you access to all of the uh, PSDs. I haven't found all of them yet, but I know most of these designs are in the family stores, but I just left these on this, on this mock-up so you can kind of get a good idea of just how, how great they look when they and when they pop off the page. Like kind of what Carrie was saying, you just make sure you use text that has really good con contrast uh, onto your background. And, um, you know, I think this, this, this could be some really cool stuff. And so also what I set up was, um, so, so since the, the round necklaces are more of like a 2800 by 2800 canvas, um, let's see. So kind of what I set up is, is, is just, this is kind of a good guide to use uh, in this circle. So when you want, when you're ready to submit your artwork, you want to make sure that you're in, in this area here. So if I were to just take that off, this is just a square 2800 by 2800. But it is sort of a circle in there, so this can kind of you want to stay within here and not really go above outside of the of this circle. So say for instance, if I have um, if I do have uh, my, my design, I, I I can see that I can enlarge it to that point, and then obviously you know whether it's not personalized or personalized really doesn't matter for this. But so when you're ready to send, so if it's like a manually personalized design, when you're ready to send your your uh, your artwork into Carry. Um, like I said, now I didn't know that carry that you can actually just use the hex code, which is cool. So you can just really save it transparent, use the color code from whatever the background that you want, which will be right here. But also then you would just literally just take off that layer and you will just send that. You know now that that fits within that circle and you can just send that off to carry as your, you know, for your artwork file. And so I included that also in the, uh, in the Dropbox there is a 2800 by 2800 round necklace PSD. So again, it's just a good guide for you guys just to make sure that you're you're not going over if you're trying to fit names in there, um, that you're not, you know, you know exactly what, what area you're working with on, on those round ones. And I think the other ones are, are pretty basic, the square and the rectangle. You don't have to worry about them. Those dimensions are all, all in there. Um, also, what I wanted to show you, let's see if I can screen two. You see it? You see the uh, Dropbox, uh, Matthew? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So just as you guys go through, also for uh, and I put this, I just put that in the Dropbox, but you can obviously I put this in the chat too. This gives you a really good information on exactly uh, descriptions, um, kind of what Carrie just showed you. So those of you that want to hop, start hopping on the stuff, it gives you dependent options. Gives you your pricing, uh, shipping pricing, additional shipping pricing if, if they buy more than one um, kind of product and delivery times. They do a really nice job of just uh, kind of setting you all up here. So you can really get most of your information if you have any questions about that kind of stuff here. You, like I said, you can get your descriptions for your, your campaign uh, in here. And, um, and again, kind of shows you, again, it gives you another tutorial on how to uh, set up your, your code from when you send it, send in your orders. And again, it just shows you through some of the things that the rectangle and the square template and what size you need, you need for um, your art files. Um, also kind of explains that stuff over here, the resolution. So pretty much you can, uh, you can get whatever you need from this site. So uh, I included that in the Dropbox here. As you can see, I gave you some, uh, some of the mockups. We'll just go through some of them, really cool. Uh, they, they, they look really sharp on the, like, sort of like the gift bags. There's a square one, uh, the round necklace one I showed you on Photoshop just now. There's another one with some, some pretty flowers, looks really nice. And then just a regular square. So I think that about covers it on those, on the mock-ups and stuff. And if you guys have any... Hey, Michael. Yeah. And just so people, when they do get registered, those mock-ups I gave you were a handful of probably... 30 to 40 or 50 now that we have that we send uh, once they get registered on the account we send them a link to a Dropbox that oh, okay. has a, all the all three shapes on you know from being holding in the hand if they want to use that as a Facebook ad you know look more native like that hand one that you had to one sitting you know with flowers or on the that velvet bag that they all get shipped out with uh, versus just plain ones that chains at different angles so they'll get access to about 30 to 40 mockups. Oh, excellent. I, I did not know that. Okay, so yeah, this kind of at least gets you going, and then once you guys sign up, like he just said, you'll get a lot more, which is which is awesome. Yep. Um, 
Uh, when you're ready, I've got a couple of things to say about, just about the supplier and that as well. When you're finished. Okay. Whenever you're ready, I'm I'm done. That's all I wanted yeah. to show them. So, um, could I share my screen again, or? Yeah. Let me. Can uh, I just do it. I'm not sure. Let me, there, I'll go ahead. Uh, right now. Uh, hold on. Bear with. Okay, uh, I can see it. You got the right one. Yeah, I see the campaign. Yeah, got you. Okay, so uh, just want to mention as well, in case anybody doesn't know or um, or hasn't got Kerry's uh, supply, Kerry set up as a supplier. A lot of you will already have a, a jewelry supplier in your supplier section, which is under the T-Rex menu. Whether you've got T-Rex Ecom or the old one. You'll have the supplier section there, and Kerry's got a new email. So the I think the old email will still work, but uh, right. if yeah, is that right, Kerry? Yeah, yeah, correct. It will still work if people have that built in. They don't have to go change it all. But for new yeah. people, or uh, and I know future builds are going to use the the new uh, setup. So yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> if you want to use Kerry's new one, it's, you don't have to change it on all your products. You can just go into your supplier section, click edit. Uh, and then go in and just change out the email here and if you don't have Kerry set up as a supplier yet you just go to your supplier section uh, hit add new up here and then you can just um, you know you can name it whatever you want Kerry Patrick jewelry and then really all you need is the order email address the rest of this information is for your own you know your own information but for it actually to work and everything the, the main thing you need is just this uh, order email address so <coughs> I guess that um, your new email will be on your new website and everything will it carry? Uh, yep. Yeah yeah cool yeah so I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about setting up the supplier. Awesome um, so we do have a couple questions here you can guys keep them rolling in um, this is not really uh, Related to the jewelry, but um, Matthew, is there any chance of getting curved text supported in tracks? I know we've had that question a, a few times. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Um, it's down, I'll put it on the list, um, but you know, I don't know to okay. be honest. So, Carrie, there are a couple of questions about what um, what what the, their cost is for the pendants or for the necklaces. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll pull. Uh... Actually, you want to pull? Or do you have the screen now? Michael, yeah. yeah, you can just you can pull up the the my econ fulfillment and go to that go to that section. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You are right on it. Okay. There you go. Uh, basically, uh, the, all the pricing is is listed here for no matter what shape that you go with. It's the same cost. Uh, the only the nine dollars only real variable is uh, you get tracked USPS shipping uh, with your branded shipping label, and we can drop in. You know, if you want to send some some people send uh, cards to do uh, post sales, uh, coupons, offers, or referrals or whatever in there, uh, you can. Uh, that that three dollars covers up to three uh, pieces, uh, so three necklaces. Uh, some people have gotten creative, and we we'll talk about that with. Uh, you know, getting multiple generations, or you know, it's something that's targeted all the women in their lives. We've actually, I think, probably had, I think, nine, uh, nine pieces on the same order was the most for uh, a guy I got for all of his daughters. Um, uh, and 50 cents for each. Uh, I've got an example here of the additional ship pieces that you can kind of see, just kind of based on weight. But most of your 99% of the orders are all going to be three pieces or less. So you'd be looking at, you know, if you had a three-piece order. Uh, it'd be nine times three for the three pendants, so twenty-seven plus three dollars for the track USPS shipping, so thirty bucks to get them all shipped to your customers. Um, does that answer your 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 question, Patty? I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So pretty much nine dollars plus the three dollars shipping, up to three necklaces. Okay, so we have a question here from David. What if we have access to custom artwork? 
where the original is a painting, do we take pictures of the artwork and convert it somehow? Um, well, I mean, if you, if you did take, like, because they're small on the jewelry, if you did take a picture with, with you know, a good camera, you basically just got to scale it down to the right size to fit into those templates, and I'm sure it would come out pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they were, uh, Carol's asking about signing up. You mentioned signing up, and where they get a link to the Dropbox. Uh, where do they, is that also on the site, Gary? Yeah, if you scroll down a little bit, Michael, uh, it will, I think it should be a set up your free account. Okay. Uh, yep, and they would just enter their, their info there. And then you should get a confirmation email. So sometimes you got to check your spam to see if it goes in there. Uh, but you can put your name, email address. The only reason we ask for a uh, website name, web address, and uh, logo, which you don't have to have any of them, uh, but we do branded shipping labels. So it doesn't come, there's no reference to us. It would come from a fulfillment center, care of your cool uh, and have your logo on it. Uh, and so that's why we ask for that information there. And, and kind of while we're on that with the branding, uh, we can also set people up uh, if you want to have uh, tracking emails automatically sent to your customers uh, and you can be blind, you can do, be BCC'd on that and it's just a generic uh, address that it sends from that using our fulfillment software. So it's like some shipping something dot com, just a generic uh, type of uh, uh, email address that once again still couldn't, customer couldn't track back uh, at all. So. Okay. Um. Do you, do you ship worldwide? This is from Jeff and Vicki. At this, at this point, we are primarily uh, primarily shipping uh, US-based. We have a few people that we've worked some stuff out to do international. I mean, obviously, you run into, when you get into that with, uh, with um, uh, jewelry, there are certain, certain countries that have laws that if, because you have to put on that on the sheet kind of what the item is. We found that there's a challenge sometimes when it's a, a, a jewelry or a metal type thing versus a, a fabric, a cotton fabric, where certain customs they don't let certain type of material in. Or, or what. we can, we kind of working out case by case. We're not really putting it out there that that we do it. But if you've got a market that you want to really hit and you want to have a discussion, reach out to me offline. But we're doing 99% of stuff uh, in the states here at this point. Okay. <clears throat> on the post-sale marketing pieces, can that be a card of some sort? Yeah, that's what we recommend. As long as it's no more than uh, three inches by five inches, and obviously it needs to be flat, so we're thinking you know, postcard type type stock. Uh, yeah, we'll slip that in there, and if you want to have, you know, uh, pictures of other, you know, item cross-sale offers or a, a coupon code or a referral, uh, referral type thing to get people to refer family and friends or other items that are complimentary. You can have all those on there, and uh, we'll drop them in there uh, in the envelope for you. But you do need to send those to us. Um, so if you want to do that, we don't actually go out and print those, and uh, but we can get you our shipping, and you can send those to us, and we'll drop them into all your packages. Okay, great. Um, will jewelry orders be on the same CSV as the T-shirt orders? Uh, uh, no, nope. Well, if you guys, yeah, you go ahead and handle that, Matthew. Uh, yeah, no, because uh, what happens is when you uh, select the supplier, they'll be they're, all the jewelry ones will be in their own CSV, and they'll get sent straight to Kerry if you've got the email set to Kerry, so they won't be mixed up with T-shirts. Okay, um, this is from Philip. Are there any quantity price break points? Uh, so if yeah, let's say. At this point, we've got a we've got nothing necessarily published uh, listed. But if you are gonna, like we've got some sellers that they do a good bulk and jewelry is a focus on what they're doing. Uh, we can definitely, why don't you reach out to me uh, direct on Skype or something outside of that, and we can discuss uh, volume price points. Once you hit, we've got a few guys that they hit a certain number. They want to hit a certain amount per month, for either rebate or set it up for credits for the previous month. Once you actually are establishing that you're really gonna do some volume, uh, we can definitely discuss that. Okay. Um, this one is from Jay. I don't know if I quite understand it, uh, but you may know what he's talking about. Um, excuse me. 
<clears throat> does the logo still need to be in black and white? Yeah, he's he's referring to the logo on the uh, on the branded uh, shipping label. Yes, it is a black and white. Our thermal label printer just does black and white. But if you send us the logo and it's not uh, black and white, it will the software kind of auto turns it into a black and white version anyway. I just think they look better when you send a black and white version of your logo to begin with. Okay. Um, this one's from Ken. Uh, Carrie, the rectangle is portrait only, correct? There is not a landscape version, is there? Uh, you totally, you can orient it however you want. That's up for you and your customers because some people, um, even some of our own customers from our personal sale, they will use that as, um, you know, and make them kind of look like, um, like uh, key change, shall we say. So if you want to orient it and have it printed out, you know, that way or the way your design kind of looks, you think that looks cooler or looks better, you're more than welcome to do it. Um, just keep in mind, it, 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 most people, they're just hanging these around their neck. I mean, that's up to you to orient. As long as you keep it within the print area, we'll print whatever you want. Okay. That makes sense. Um, this one's from Hattie. Carrie, are you looking to do any other colors besides silver chains? Actually, that's a good, good question, Patty. Yeah, we are uh, starting actually doing a little bit of testing now with actually um, a cup with uh, black uh, for a little bit more masking look as well as uh, the uh, bronze. I think it's bronze or copper. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, and as well as uh, just for you guys to address things that are on the horizon, looking at offering a, uh, actually been doing a lot of personal testing, a different uh, a snake chain type. Uh, as well, that'll be available here soon versus the chain link style. So, okay. Um, I, I would say if you want ETA on that, Patty, I, I'd say we're looking at uh, for it to all be set up on our end system probably mid, say, probably four, next four to six weeks, so beginning of April, mid April. Okay, great. Um, David's asking, I, I don't know. If you'll know this too, Carrier or Matt, do you use the same email address for all fulfillment? And if that's if that's just related to the necklaces, yes, right, Carrie? There's it's just yes. the same for all. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and then obviously if it's you know for anything else outside of Carrie, you would just use you know the print text or your own if you're doing it manually personalized. The only okay, other yes. thing he may be talking about is for people that have us doing some physical product fulfillment. Uh, for them, I'm not sure if that's you refer, meaning David, but yeah, that would be the same as well. And obviously, if we didn't answer, I guess you can ask the question again. So. Okay. Yeah, he said he got the answer. Yes, and for those of you that may be thinking it does come with the chain, correct? Correct. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got a question, Kerry. Um, do you see many of these being sold for, you know, aimed at males? Uh, some some people do, uh, but I will tell you personally, but, but once again, this is where you have to separate yourself from the product. I'm not a jewelry wear, wearer at all. I don't, I don't, I mean, I wear my wedding ring, and that's about it. Yeah. I'm just not a jewelry person. Uh, to, you know, to me, um, but, but again, I think all... Not, if you got jewelry guys, that's fine. I'm just sharing my friends. That's why I try to separate it. I don't think they're very, I don't think it's masculine, very masculine, the chains and the charms me, but some people do that. I do think the black that we're testing, uh, it's kind of cool looking. Uh, I think that's a little bit more masculine just because of the color, but obviously a lot of guys wear silver chains and do that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So, but I would say just like probably most necklaces or pendants, whether it's just a, the vast majority are, are, are women. I mean, yeah. you can put something up, test, see if guys are, are going to like it. You know, you run a $5 test, and if they respond to it, then, yeah, you go ahead and sell it, definitely. But it's mostly women. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. I was just curious to see if you did get many. Um, I have a question, too. So do you, do you usually see this time of year with Mother's Day coming up as a good time to start to start advertising those type of things? Do you do a lot of Mother's Day designs? Yes, um, definitely. And, and obviously the beauty of the T-Rex software with personalization. Uh, here's something that you guys want to keep in mind that oftentimes 
uh, jewelry in general, when, when we were talking about the idea elements that, that work better on shirts versus necklaces, mm -hmm. typically jewelry in general is more of a personal type of item for a person where they don't necessarily care if the whole world sees it like when they're walking by with their shirt. And the fact that you can take a personal item and personalize it automatically with, with tracks with, you know, a nickname or, you know, the date that they became a mom or a grandma or whatever it may be, uh, definitely a, a, a great opportunity to take advantage of as well as I will tell you for any of you get, that are looking to tap into Mother's Day, you have opportunities to get multiple purchases because you're getting multiple generations and, you know, they may get something for mom and grandma, you know, so think about that with your upsells of bundles of, of products. Uh, it, it leads some certain holidays and things lead themselves well to, hey, you can get one or two of these, two or three, maybe not for yourself, but for those special ladies in your life. Absolutely. So I was always, I always thought uh, if you guys are, you know, thinking of new designs or uh, new concepts, you know, Think along the lines of how can I use this for both. Uh, I've, I've been trying to think of a design over the last day or so and trying to get the wording right, but where I can actually make it for, you know, the mom. And then you can turn around and say, you know, obviously you would want to make it so like, um, you know, maybe the mom would buy it for the grandma. So somehow relating it to the grandkids. And then on the flip side, you would want to make, you know, kind of use the same design, but maybe change around the text or, or the phrasing a little bit to where the mom can buy one for the daughter for, for Mother's Day. So, you know, think along those lines where you not you don't necessarily need two different designs, but you just can maybe just change change the phrasing around a little bit and that can kind of help you uh, you know, so that way when you are when you are marketing these things, um, you know, you're kind of hitting both both generations at one time and and, and uh, you know, so they can see that there's there is options for, for both, which I think is really cool. Um, I had another question, Carrie. Is as far as returns go, um, how is that uh, handled I, on your end? If say if it's something, if it's you know if uh, if it's you know maybe for whatever reason the chain shows up broken or they just don't necessarily didn't turn out the way they thought, uh, can you kind of walk mm -hmm. us through that? Yeah, uh, if chain. If there is an issue with the chain, just let us know. We'll send them out a, a new chain at no uh, no additional cost to the seller. And pretty much we do like a 90-day, uh, as long as it's under you know normal wear and tear, and they just just didn't have their grandkid uh, you know reach around their arms and try to swing from their chain from their neck and break it. But uh, mm -hmm. if the chain has an issue, uh, you know have let us know. We'll drop another chain in the mail for them. Uh, no additional cost to you. Um, from the standpoint of it showing up and not being uh, what they expected, I say two things with that. Uh, number one, we try to work with the sellers early, early, and that's why we give you a lot of mock-ups, uh, even outside of what we found over time. And you can still, and some people still do use the digital ones uh, because they've got them in their stores. Uh, but number one, the real-life photo mock-ups, uh, so they're pretty clear on exactly what it is, uh, as well as you, uh, some of the things I was talking about earlier with understanding the size restraints and all that, because remember, this is one-inch pendant. And they may be sitting at home on their 30-inch computer monitor scrolling through Facebook and see it where it's going to look, you know, six inches wide. It's going to be a lot lot different. So if you've got a 1,000-word poem, you know, that's why I say if you're not sure, if your layout, we don't necessarily want to be held responsible for uh, returns that are because, you you know, you try to put a 1,000 words on a one-inch pendant. So reach out to us so we can try to work some of that out up front. But we'll work with you. I mean, if there's... If it's our quality issue, we definitely 100% take uh, responsibility and we'll make the correction. We prefer to work with you on the front end at no cost to you, obviously. We prefer to work with you on the front end if you're concerned about, you know, how you're displaying it with the mock-up or how you're describing it. Um, you know, that's why we've got listed there that it is silver-plated. Uh, it's not sterling, pure sterling silver. You know, don't go out there and I know some sell and, and uh, lie about what the material is so you think you can increase conversions and they get it and, and you know, take it to get it tested and it's not and it's coming back on. Well, that's not something we're going to, you know, stand behind you on. Tell the customer the right thing. Show them the right representation. If you have any questions, you know, let us know. But okay. if it's an error on our, if it's an error on our part or they just get it and, and you did everything right but they still just didn't want the particular item, that's fine. We can give you a credit back and no big deal. Hopefully people understand the, the subtlety difference between misrepresenting the product or, again, we're talking with a one-inch 
you know, one inch diameter, you can't squeeze a thousand words on there and expect people to be able to read it. It looks different on your 30 inch screen when you're putting it together. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that, that helps a lot. And also, I, I do like your idea of, of possibly using the mock ups of, like, on a real person around like, uh, someone's neck. Um, I think it would probably help eliminate some of that stuff up front, too. There, there is a, a couple of mock-ups in the mock-up builder in the members area with a lady wearing them. I think so, yeah. I believe there is. Yeah. And I just was thinking then as well, something that might be worth testing or might work well is with manually personalized products in T-Rex, you can um, have the option for a file upload, basically a photo upload. So like, you know, pictures of um, babies and stuff like that might sell well as well. Just a thought. Pictures of grandchildren, babies, dogs, uh, pets, pets, babies, and grandbabies seem to uh, work well. That's saying hey, that's where the goal is at. Hey guys, yeah, hey, you know, I don't know if you have the same issue, Carrie, but I've seen a few things on some of the art that comes to me, especially for the pillows, where the design that's intended on the inside of the object, inside the pillow. Is really crowding the edges of the uh, of what we're putting it on, kind of like what you had in that necklace where you showed that one earlier, Michael. And the uh, the Irish design was almost edge to edge. Mm -hmm. You really need to give yourself a little more room with that logo and let the background become more of the necklace or the pillow, because uh, for example, in some of these uh, Irish pillows, the name ends up so close to the bottom that uh, it kind of folds underneath the pillow. So be careful about that yeah. when you're putting your final art together. Okay. Yeah, de Next. definitely. Are you seeing that as well, Kerry? Uh, yes. Yeah, and that's uh, and, and same thing. There just has to be like instance, some level of bleed or gap just to allow whatever adjustments need to be you know need to be done. Uh, so yeah, I'm totally with you there, Randy. And really, if you can, you're better off making the uh, the art itself. You know, again, you. Visual, visualize a, a pillow like the uh, the plaid pillows with the O'Donnell's crest in there. If you make that crest and the word smaller, we can always blow it up, but we can't reduce it down. And I don't know if you have the same, if, if that's how you look at the jewelry as well, but again, we can enlarge it to where it fills up the whole pillow and that the, eye, the uh, logo itself stays centered, but we can't reduce it down because then we lose the uh, pattern that has to go end to end. So is this, can you see my screen, Randy? Show no, me. I can't. That, that's yeah. correct. Okay. All right. So uh, this is what you were kind of talking about, like on you know having an edge to edge here, maybe just giving yourself a little bit more room. Exactly. Okay. You, might, you can get to one of like the O'Donnell's pillow, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm seeing quite a few of those where uh, some some of the people are just crowding it too much. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Um, I think we've got a couple more questions here, guys, and uh, let's see. Um, I know we had a question, uh, what the average shipping time from day of order to delivery? Uh, it, uh, typically, the way, we'll work, the way we work, and Randy and I are talking about maybe integrating things a little tighter, this may change, but at this point, when you send us an order, we will get it out. No later, and most of the time it's three, but I always put it towards the towards the further end. I'd rather under promise over deliver, but no later than five business days from when we get the order and we actually get uh, uh, payment uh, up. We actually get payment before we send your order out. Okay, um, Randy and I are discussing some things, maybe to integrate a little tighter that things may change uh, with that, uh, but no later than five. Typically, you're gonna it's gonna go out within three business days. Um, we also, as far as shipping time, just so you know what you're communicating to your customers, as far as shipping times, where we're located is in southwest Ohio, not too far from uh, uh, Amazon, a major Amazon facility, eBay, actually um, uh, another major, some major t-shirt printers, uh, facilities. We get stuff pretty quick anywhere in the United States. Normally, there's going to be anywhere from one to three day uh, delivery time. So if you tack that on to, you know, you can figure that out. And I've got that all laid out on the um, on the website there. So you can determine on that product description for our product what you can tell your customers, you know, what they can look forward to as far as uh, getting the items into their hands. 
And if you got a situation, just like I know Randy does as well, uh, if you got a situation where someone's really trying to, they waited last minute and they're trying to order a bunch of stuff, you know, for an event, and you want to reach out and we can make it happen in the production schedule, uh, you know, we, we'll help you out. Okay, um, great. That that helps. Uh, well, I think that's about it. I didn't see. I haven't seen any more questions come in. Uh, and everyone, um, as far as if you did have any other questions about just anything trucks related that we didn't get to, just if you can just go ahead and just post those in the Facebook group, and we'll try to uh, to answer those. We we didn't want to keep Terry too long, so we're at our about our hour threshold. Uh, we just wanted to really answer the questions, anything jewelry related. I did see a few in there, so if you can just do me a favor, guys, and just go over to the Facebook group and just pop all those questions in there, and we'll try to answer them as, as quickly as we can. Um, but uh, if there's nothing else coming through, uh, thank you so much, Carrie. Uh, people seem to really enjoy it. I think it's gotten people pretty jazzed up and ready for upcoming uh, Mother's Day, and I think that uh, you know you guys can really hop on this and. And really see some see some awesome things, and, and especially with our funnel. It, it, I know we don't have uh, you know any people that you know carries from his his people on there, and I know they're excited about seeing the funnel. And we're going to hopefully set up something soon. But you guys know how the funnel works, and what um, what an awesome upsell item this jewelry can be uh, now that we have those one click upsells. So um, if you uh, have any other questions, like I said. Take it over to Facebook, and we will uh, answer it then. Thanks again, Carrie. Thank you, uh, Matthew and, and uh, yep. Randy, for popping in. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We'll talk to everyone soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Carrie. All right. Appreciate yep. it. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Yep. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. See you guys.